So this is part of our researchers' profiles and OHTN researchers' profile. And uh, we're here with Dr. Mark Tyndall, who is the head of infectious diseases at the University of Ottawa. And you work at the hospital in, in Ottawa as well. My office at the Ottawa General Hospital. All oh, right. And you're kind of a, a unique person because you are a practitioner. You see patients and you're an epidemiologist. So right. tell us a little bit about your background. Um, well, I went to medical school like a lot of people did. Um, my real interest was in global health and policy when I was going through, and I felt infectious disease training would be the best way to get there. I went to uh, the University of Manitoba, who had um, a long-standing collaboration with the University of Nairobi. Um, went there as part of my ID infectious disease fellowship for a couple of years and worked with HIV prevention programs in, uh, in Kenya. And I still was interested in getting more epidemiology training. And uh, at that time, I met up with uh, Jonathan Mann, who was in working in Africa. He was the head of the global program for AIDS at the time, and he was on his way to Harvard. And so uh, I, he took me on as one of his uh, grad students, and I did a doctoral degree with Jonathan in, um, in Harvard. And that took me back for two more years in Kenya to do uh, work in health and human rights and HIV prevention. So any defining moments that stay with you of your career at the BC Center for Excellence and working in the downtown east side other than meeting me? <laughs> well, um, I think that th there's probably several. I mean, certainly I was immersed in a, you know, a group of people and a and a community that was highly unique. And so Vancouver, as much credit they get for forward thinking about um, their harm reduction and have done, you know, tremendous things uh, to really reduce HIV transmission in that population. Um, it, it was a, a very ghettoized community. So a rich city like Vancouver had decided to basically restrict people who had drug you drug addiction and mental health to about 10 square blocks of human misery. So at the time I arrived, there was an estimated 15,000 people who were using drugs really in that uh, 10 square block area. And you could go the transition from my office at St. Paul's Hospital, uh, walk, which was, you know, gentrified and wealthy and walking through the business section in, in Vancouver and then you cross a line and all of a sudden you're into hell and that has slowly improved but as far as uh, arriving there and realizing what society had done to this group of people earlier on they um, through with best intentions they had uh, liberalized um, people from uh, being in um, hospitals that catered to mental illness and wanted to release everybody mm -hmm. uh, with really no money and support and uh, a large uh, number of them ended up in the downtown east side and uh, so it was a, a really an experiment in you know human misery was a downtown east side and it's taken a long time to recover from that and so as far as a, a moment going there you know you're really just struck with what you don't feel like you're in Canada anymore Really, it's uh, how could we be doing this to people? And so uh, I, you know, I worked there about twelve years and saw very incremental changes, um, but it was uh, shocking when I first got there. But how has that experience informed your new position as a researcher, as a teacher, and and a practitioner in Ottawa? Um, I, I mean, greatly influenced it. Um, I had the. Uh, opportunity to work with very forward-thinking people in Vancouver. Um, we did a lot of uh, research work, and um, a lot of that has not been scaled up in other cities. So, um, some of there's things in Ottawa and most other cities across Canada that are lacking as far as HIV prevention for drug users. So, I think a lot of the lessons that I learned there uh, could bring to Ottawa. The certainly the scale of the problem is not the same in every city, but my observation is the the uh, challenges to people with addiction and poverty are much the same. So the, the, the cities may be different. The intensity of the number of people living together with these problems are different. Um, but the, the, from an individual standpoint, their challenges are very much the same across Canada. Okay, and in December of 2013, you got a research grant uh, 
uh, research chair grant from the Ontario HIV Treatment Network. And so mm -hmm. tell us what is uh, what that is about. Well, there was a, a competition to um, have these five-year funded positions uh, for people in Ontario that uh, wanted to lead. Uh, the term was impact, uh, impact uh, associated research, and uh, I applied for it and got it. The, the strategically, OHTN uh, divided it into different uh, vulnerable groups. So uh, the grant that I got was to uh, do research uh, with people who were using drugs. Um, so it's huge, you know, it's a very uh, um, nice recognition to get that award. Um, it uh, helps me to uh, focus more of my attention on my research. It also comes with some money to um, support uh, students and other people in the community. Um, my focus has really been very community-based research when I got to uh, Ottawa. So the work that I'm doing now with a group called Proud or an organization that we formed is uh, really driven largely by people with lived experience. So that's, I've really uh, tried to be true to that kind of vision and try to give the voice to people who uh, aren't listened to very well. Do you have an example in mind of the kinds of uh, research you've done or you plan to do that is translated uh, more or less effectively into policy change and practice? Something that comes to mind. Well, um, it's pretty early in Ottawa. Um, right. I think that it, there's really good um, examples of um, what we were able to do in BC that have, have, have really influenced policy. When I first got there, there was a one-to-one -one exchange policy for needles, for instance, which uh, um, we showed through uh, early studies that that would clearly was uh, contributing to HIV transmission, so liberalizing needles, certainly. Um, and then really working on um, ways to support people with antiretroviral drugs. So we have, uh, there was a lot of different strategies that were set up and that are ongoing in the downtown east side to allow more and more people to uh, successfully take their antiretrovirals. And if probably the most uh, high profile program was the Insider Supervised Injection Site, so which uh, really stands alone as North America's only site. And we have uh, developed uh, um, a lot of evidence that this is a very uh, powerful um, and important part of harm reduction. And so in Ottawa, um, I'm working with a group to try to uh, uh, create a supervised site in, in Ottawa too. So that will be one of our main uh, focuses. Certainly. Uh, going to uh, one of the things that we started, um, we realized initially that we really um, needed to get good data. So um, the, it's really a research focus. In the last 12 months, we've enrolled 900 people uh, that are using drugs into a cohort. They'll be followed prospectively. And, but even from the baseline information, we've uh, obtained a lot of uh, very valuable data. And uh, we're just just finished recruiting that wave of, of uh, participants in December. So we're really just working on that data now. Is there a particular message for the emerging researchers? who want to make it into this field, who really feel the love for it, they feel called by it. What do you see in the future and what would be your message? Well, I th um, some of the issues that drove the research in the earlier days are pretty much taken care of. We have really good treatment. Uh, we have ways to engage people in treatment. and But a lot of the problems that we're facing now, um, if you look at the epidemiologic curves, in many populations, they're fairly flat over the last almost decade. So we're doing a pretty good job, but I think we're at risk in Canada of allowing HIV just to become a grumbling public health problem. And uh, this is, uh, so we need to encourage young researchers to, uh, you know, really focus on, I think, policy changes that will uh, uh, make things safer for people. It's, it's quite obvious in the um, drug using community that we have the tools right now to prevent HIV infection. Um, and in cities, or at least in parts of the cities like downtown east side, there's very few new infections among drug users um, because of harm reduction. And so it's a tragedy to me to realize in many cities across Canada that harm reduction uh, advocates and strategies are still struggling and we're in a government situation now, at least from a federal point of view, that is not very uh, supportive of harm reduction.
reduction and has really, really swung the pendulum more to the criminal justice system. And um, as far as uh, the research to show what is happening is very important, but to uh, really focus on policy and advocacy because we have a lot of knowledge and tools and that are not being scaled up, and we really uh, need to focus on that. Thanks for your time. Much okay. appreciated. It's My a pleasure. pleasure.